in focus. Now I'd like to introduce our guest for today and I'm very excited to be able to introduce Pecos Hank and Hank has been chasing storms since 1994 where he witnessed his first tornado in 2002, documented the widest tornado ever in 2013 and the year after the fastest moving tornado ever and in 2019 discovered a new TLE called a Green Ghost which uh, we'll talk about that here coming up here in just a moment. Hank has footage that has aired all over the world and many stations and clients including BBC Earth, Nat Geo, Disney, The Weather Channel, and so many more as well as a few motion pictures. Hank, thank you very much for joining us today here on Weather and Ag and Focus. How is your day going? Justin, Dean, Bridget, it's great to see you guys. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing great. I just found out this was a video call, so I had to put makeup on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so uh, oh. You're, you're, a, you're a step you're a step ahead of me, then, Hank. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hank, you've been doing this for quite a few years, and uh, what got you interested in in starting this up? Love of all things earth sciences, love of nature, the beauty of thunderstorms. For example, there's a hurricane that might hit Florida, right? I don't care. Like, I don't want to see it. I don't generally think hurricanes are beautiful, so I don't go after them. If I could be in the eye wall, that would be amazing. Or not the eye wall, but inside the eye, that would be amazing. But just all the wind, stuff like that, uh, I see that as more damaging. I like the beautiful stuff you know the supercell structures the lightning and of course some tornadoes as we know can be beautiful unless they're demolishing one of our little towns or cities right now do you have a do you have any type of weather background or you're just a just a weather enthusiast and you love going out getting videos and and pictures of all this yes i play the guitar <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we heard you have a real good band, so. <laughs> yeah, I was studying biology at University of Houston, and um, my junior year, I quit to be a rock star and was touring and doing the whole band touring thing. And and then the storm chasing thing kind of took over. Being a, a musician allowed me the freedom to make my own schedules to storm chase, because as you guys know, you know, it's not easy to, you know, if there's a, you know, a moderate out, you know, risk for storms to that you have that day off. Mm -hmm. Now, Pecos, I wanted to know, because I've heard that there's a story behind how you got the name Pecos, Hank. Do you have that story? Would you be willing to share that with us? Yeah, a friend of mine, you know, I love, I love like reptiles. I love rattlesnakes. Mm -hmm like talking to them and snuggling with them. And uh, one of my friends from Belgium, she cut, she cut off my, cut out a picture of my face and stuck it on Pecos Bill, which as everybody knows, you know, took a rattlesnake and lassoed a tornado and tamed it down to either a wind or a little whirlwind, or he wrote it into heaven, depending on which myth you believe. I think I believe the the wrote it off to heaven myth. So anyway, she, she pasted my head on his body and and i think pecos hank she called me that and that that happened <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> now, oh that's a great story no hank so you've uh you, you've documented uh the, the fastest tornado which i believe that was the one in pilger nebraska correct Right. Okay. I was I was actually working in Nebraska when that was taking place. That was an amazing event. And then what was the widest tornado? You've documented the widest tornado as well. Yeah, the widest tornado we currently have on record is El Reno 2013, May 31st, 2013. And then my team that my sci the scientific team that I work for for a couple weeks of the year headed by Dr. Anton Simon, we did some calculations based on Skip Talbot's initial calculations that he did in 2014 of that Pilger rope that was just flying. And he calculated it back then to be 90 miles per hour. And so we just did, Dr. Anton was able to find the scar that it left on the earth afterwards. And so we were able to get really precise calculations uh, using photogrammetry from several different photographers that were there on the day. Me, Jennifer Brindley, Skip Talbot, and a couple other guys. And we calculated the tornado to be moving at 94 about wow. miles per hour for only like five or six seconds. So it was being slingshotted past 
the uh, developing Wakefield tornado. So, you know, there might be, you know, like that derecho that came through Minnesota and Iowa. There could have been some faster tornadoes in that, but, you know, how strong were they? How long of a duration were they going? So right now we just have those calculations as, as the fastest calculated. I know Skip is working on a paper and Dr. Anton are working on a, a paper to publish that. But uh, I guess that's up for the uh, meteorologist to decide if it is officially the fastest tornado. So, Hank, you said something interesting in the fact that you spend a couple of weeks where you're set up working for the scientific group. Do you then take that time to position yourself specifically within Tornado Alley or somewhere else so that you're there to catch them at the right time? Or how, how does that timing work? So with Dr. We feel like late early June is a good time to do our team. It's a three vehicle team and we, we do kind of a dragnet in order to get our photogrammetry. We kind of need to be close to the tornado. There has to be debris and we all need to be at the right angles. So late June, once the crowds kind of die out, because I mean, after May 31st, the, the storm chaser in the alley is cut in half as far as how many people are there. So we kind of start then and, uh, and we try to position in the path in Tornado Alley of a powerful, a significant tornado. And uh, if we can get the debris triangulated from the, the few different vehicles, then Dr. Anton has the software and the computer software to make some calculations. Because when we're slicing radar, right, we're only getting the, the planal view and we're seeing the velocity. Of course, with some of the radar beams have two slices at the same times, but there's that vertical component. So maybe these tornadoes, when you see some of those vertical components, just the tornado, you know, the, the, the debris just going straight up, you know, we may, these tornadoes may have faster velocities than, than we suspect. That's awesome. Speak, I had never thought about it, it in really those awesome. terms. Okay. <laughs> Speaking Dr. of Anton with some of the tornadoes, a we... better explanation than that than I can, of course. <laughs> Well, with some of these tornadoes, I mean, we've watched a lot of your footage that's on YouTube. And by the way, congratulations of just surpassing a million subscribers on your channel. What are some of the craziest stories that you've been encountered with these tornadoes? I mean, I've seen a couple where there's this tornado going through a town and it's taken out a building on the other side of the intersection that you're stuck at. Yeah, um, that to me wasn't as, I, I mean, I think like the Pilger was an incredible event. Um, obviously the freak shows, mm -hmm. the fringe cases like El Reno 2013 are just fringe cases when sometimes when things are happening like that, you're so focused on being safe in your dumb close positioning, if, if you don't mind the innuendo, but uh, it's uh, a lot of times you miss, it's hard for you to process what's really happening until afterwards you go back and it all kind of comes in. I can remember when El Reno 2013 happening, um, I, I knew something was weird and I was filming it, but I, I, my brain didn't quite process that the whole storm, the whole thing was a tornado. I was seeing these sub vortices, but I was still shooting it. And I think my subconscious kind of knew, you know, this whole thing is a tornado. And then afterwards you get home, and you're like, wow, that whole thing was a tornado. So, so uh, I think the fringe cases to answer your question, Pilger, El Reno 2013, uh, and I could probably go on, but those are the ones that really stick out. Right. Well, we're going to hit bottom of the hour here really quick. Pecos, please stay on the line with us. We'll be back here in just a couple minutes. If you would like to join in on our conversation, ask any questions for us or for Pecos, Hank, feel free to give us a call at 701-293-9000. Again, that phone number is 701-293-9000. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about tornadoes. And, well, I think a lot of people are interested to know what are these TLEs and what is this new discovery that you help find, Hank? So we'll get that answered and so much more when we come back. And our special guest today, Pecos Hank. If you have any questions, uh, shoot us a call, 701-293-9000. That's 701-293-9000. Uh, and I'll tell you what, if you have not seen Pecos Hank's uh, videos and just, ah, oh, it's amazing. You can find them on YouTube. Uh, and Pecos... So what is, I know you said the Pilger tornado, 
uh, El Reno. Those are two of the, the, the most significant events that, that really stand out. In terms of video or pictures that you've gotten, is there, is there one that really stands above those two where I can't believe I just got this, th- this video? This is just absolutely amazing. Yeah, you know, that's a great question because every year it does it again. You know, <laughs> I remember when I when I I got shot of 14 upward leaders coming up from the turbines one time Ooh. in Dodge City. Uh, of course, the giant jellyfish sprite are fascinating. The twin tornadoes, the the triplets here, you know, like these, this, the Dodge City mm-hmm. 2016 event where you had wow. three tornadoes on the ground. And this was a long lived cyclic supercell that was just dropping tornado after tornado. And then uh, recently uh, I got something that I'm not allowed to discuss until December 3rd, but it might be one of the greatest captures I've ever caught. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. And, well, we're going to have to second. come back to I, that. I, I just, <laughs> yeah, we're coming back to that, number one. Number two, it is very rarely that someone renders me speechless because I just keep sitting here listening and thinking of all the things I want to ask. How long have you been doing this, Hank? How long have you been tracking all this stuff down? I mean, as, as long as I, I remember as a kid, just with my little 110 film camera, trying to get the, the, the secondary flashes, you know, the return strokes of lightning, and, and getting those and being excited, as soon as I got my car, I was driving out into, you know, East Texas and then West Texas and then Arizona, just trying to document lightning. And then, of course, that ultimately leads you to the, to the mother of all game, as I say, tornadoes. And Bridget, you, you had another question for him, right? Well, I do, but I feel like if I start, I'm not going to shut up. So, okay, (laughs) next thing. (laughs) As close as you have been to some of these storms, has there ever gotten a time where you said, this got a little too close. I'm perhaps a little bit nervous and should back off. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to stop. Like uh, the near-death experiences have got to stop. And it's, uh, it's always some stupid bonehead error. I just did a video where I remember one time I was chasing a which you shouldn't even really be chasing a rain wrapped wedge. Oh, why do we even chase those? Oh, you know, it, it's like, if you get it, you're a hero for 30 minutes, but the video is so bad. It's just forgotten afterwards. That's to quote skip Talbot. But I guess we spend all this money and all this effort to get out there. And when that opportunity comes, you get caught up in it and you'll, you just get lured in. And, uh, so one time I was chasing a tornado in Canadian, Texas, and my GPS got skewed. And so I thought I was going due north, but the road was just taking me directly in the tornado. And I was in a little ravine and I didn't know it. So I came up on the hill. And so it's, it's dumb things like that. If you're going to get close to tornadoes and do what guys like me and Aaron Rigsby and, you know, Reed Timmer do, I mean, it, you're rolling the dice. And we're, we're all aware of that. But I'm trying to back off, trying to. I've been good for the last two years. My last near-death experience was 2019, and since then, I've backed off. But I I used to average one a year, seriously, and now I'm hoping to bring that average down. Is this when we make the disclaimer, professionals only, let's not all run out there and try (laughs) to do these things? (laughs) Yeah, I I think it's when we make the disclaimer, don't get caught up. You're going to, I don't care how careful you try to be and how many, I tell my wife all the time, I'm not going to do that. And I'm not going to do that anymore. And then I do it. You know, it's like, you just get so caught up in the, the majesty, you know, I'm not in it for the adrenaline. Mm -hmm. I don't want adrenaline. Like it's so much nicer to observe a tornado that, you know, you're safe from that. You can just really focus on what it's doing. than then the crazy adrenaline that, that, that can ruin the experience of a tornado. Who wants to go to the Grand Canyon and have somebody just screaming and yelling? Ah, you know, it's like you just want to soak. You just want to soak it in, right? Right. <laughs> some of us, anyway. Uh, well, Dean, some people. Dean, do you got another one before I uh, switch the subject off of tornadoes to something else? You go, buddy. I know where you're going with it. Go ahead. All right. Well, Hank, I want to talk about these TLEs and this new discovery that you made. And I forget who you were working with, so I'm sure you'll explain who that was. But what is a a TLE? 
So TLE is a transient luminous event, which are these large-scale electrical discharges that happen above thunderstorms. They were mathematically predicted, I think, a century ago, but they weren't officially proven until by accident. In 1989, when a guy from Minnesota was trying out a high-resolution camera at night and accidentally got a couple what we now call red sprites or jellyfish sprites. And so then after that, we discovered blue jets, which are these blue jets of bolts of lightning that shoot straight up out of the tops of thunderstorms. And, and so they happen above the tropopause, above the thunderstorms. And I've always wanted to document them. And I've been working with Paul Smith, who's a nighttime photographer. He started off with auroras and is, he's probably the greatest TLE capture in the world. I'm biased because he's a good friend of mine. But he and I have been working with some other companies, forecasting these things, especially the gigantic jets, the blue jets. So to back up, there's just a whole zoo of these crazy colorful light. They're not, it's not lightning. It's more like auroras caused by lightning underneath the thunderstorm. And even that's kind of a butcher of the definition to keep it short but there's some of them are magenta some of them are, are red and he and i discovered a new one and it's green and so after a giant red sprite you see this you know a second of an aurora that just kind of dissipates and so we've coined them green ghosts and it's kind of an acronym for green oxygen or green emissions of oxygen in sprite tops and that keeps in theme with sprites, elves, trolls, the other, the other TLEs in this zoological family. Right. And, and I just, well, I remember watching that video when I was still an undergrad up at the University of North Dakota just a few years ago. And it just blew me away because I've always been fascinated by sprites. I've never have yet to see one. Haven't gone too far out looking for them, but uh, just absolutely fascinating. And what is like the main cause of these? I believe in your video you did a, a little explanation on kind of what happens. And it's not just one ordinary cloud to ground lightning strike. It's like a really big, powerful one. And what it ends up doing is flipping the charge in the top of the thunderstorm. It ends up discharging into the stratosphere. Is that correct? You just said it. Yeah, I don't have to say anything. I could, I could repeat that, but it sounds like sounds like that video we did worked. Yeah, it definitely so did, most, and I know that a lot of uh, – or no, keep going. Yeah, so the most powerful flashes, cloud-to-ground flashes generally, so you are positive. So like 99% of these positive lightning flashes will cause or, – or, are the parent flash that also triggers – these uh, red sprites, if you will. Sometimes you can have a really powerful negative cloud to ground strike that will also um, be p connected with a red sprite. So it's this whole process when you get this massive lightning flashes and it's just so powerful that it flips the, the charges in the top of the thunderstorm. And then there's another layer, the ionosphere in the upper atmosphere that's generally and, and and it creates this this imbalance and so you get another electrical discharge above the thunderstorm right and when you were documenting this i mean i don't think you guys were really necessarily looking for what you ended up coining as a green ghost you were trying to fold, uh, photography mm -hmm. the the sprites what was that initial feeling when you saw that first powdery glimpse of green above those sprites Oh man, I knew. Well, you can't really see that with the naked eye. It's the high. You can see the sprites and you can see the jets, and and you could probably see a ghost in really, but they're much dimmer. Um, so the camera, the high, the sensitive camera, light sensitive camera, caught it. And kind of like auroras, you know, when you see these auroras, as you guys have seen in Minnesota. Um, a lot of times you'll, you can barely see that green glow, but of course when the pictures come back, it's like this green craziness that lights up the, the whole sky, which happens at times. The, the green ghosts are like that. They're very faint, faint auroras. And I saw it on video and knew exactly that this is something has it been documented before. I made the mistake one time when I saw the 14 upward leaders. I'd never heard of that. I'd never seen it. And, and they were simultaneous because they were close together. And I thought I discovered something. And I, so I, I kind of 
threw that out to ferret. And of course, the scientists came back and said, no, dude, we've been talking about this for 10 years. Here's the papers on it. So I want to make sure I didn't do that again. And uh, we posted some pictures and we posted the events. And, and turns out nobody had ever heard of it, had thought of it. And even better, a lot of people were skeptical about it. And, and so we thought maybe we're seeing something, maybe we're biased, and it turns out we weren't. Other people are now getting green ghosts. Oh, okay, awesome. why are they ghosts and sprites and trolls? What, who named that? I'm trying to find that So the first one, just tell me, Hank. The first one was a sprite because of their spirit-like nature. They're these dim flashes. They have this beautiful ethereal look to them. So the first one, whoever called it a sprite. Then they started as we just started discovering more elves, trolls, that theme kind of caught on. And we wanted, to, we wanted to stick with that theme. And we even came up with a, a sort of a, a loosely based acronym, if our hypothesis is correct, or I should say Paul Smith's hypothesis. We're pretty sure it is the oxygen that's exciting or glowing that's what's causing these uh, green ghosts. But who knows? We could be wrong. That's amazing. That's amazing. Hey, can you hang on with us for uh, one more segment? Do you have time? Heck yeah. Awesome. I, I, I'll tell you, we could go another <laughs> half hour to an hour with you, without a doubt. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. We are joined by YouTube sensation, uh, videographer extraordinaire, storm chaser, Pecos Hank. Check out his YouTube channel. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, got a couple quick questions for you, Hank. Uh, obviously, we're coming up on, you know, slow season. Uh, what do you do during the slow season? When you're not I out chasing. all the video <laughs> that we shot, yeah, for being on the road from March through June. I've got a pie. I'm doing it right now on the breaks, editing video so that I can get it all done for next March when it starts up again. Now, I see that picture behind you. That was from Kansas, you said, right? Uh, with the yeah. three tornadoes. That is, wow. Okay. Yeah. If we're interested, do you sell any of your, uh, any of your still frames or do you? I hope I hope so, because <laughs> because yeah. I, I want to get some of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have uh, PecosHank.com, and you can you can get them before I inflate the prices with the trend with everybody else. Right. <laughs> awesome. Now I know you. I haven't done it yet. Right. I feel like I can't do it, man. I don't want to do it. <laughs> now I I know you're mainly you're mainly severe weather in terms of tornadoes, severe thunderstorms. And, you know, hurricanes, eh, no big deal. How about auroras? If you know there's going to be the northern lights, or do you get into blizzards at all? Ooh, I mean, for me, for us down here, 55 is pretty brutal cold. So uh, <laughs> I, think that I think that rules out blizzards, doesn't it? Yeah, like it does. blizzards are below 55, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, Most times. But auroras... Auroras are a dream of mine. I saw them one time. I was flying over the Bering Strait to Japan, and was there was a, a KP4 minus index that day, Ooh. and uh, and 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 it happened. They lit up, and I was able to get some auroras. And but I, I still want to see those crazy straight up shots with the magentas and the whites and all that. You're so have okay, to, we've uh, talked about that. Trip up we've here. <laughs> I'll go ahead, Bridget. Sorry. And not just for, but not just for the weather, Hank. If you're going to make a trip up here, we not only want you to see our weather, especially when we get the northern lights, but maybe you want to bring your band because I know there's probably a few folks who are like, so, what's he do for music? Anything you want to share? I would love to. I'm making a new album right now, um, and we're going to have to tour after that, but not during storm, storm season. So, so music used to be my priority and then I swapped them. Now storm chasing is my priority. So, so my, my gigs get the leftovers, but I'd love to see, uh, my mom's from Duluth, Minnesota. That's where she was born. I'm sorry, two harbors. She's born in Duluth, but grew up in two harbors. And so we go up there a lot in the, the, the birch trees or the, in the, the gold. We don't have that down here in Texas. So when the trees turn gold and red, I miss that. And collecting agates on Lake Superior. And there's just mm -hmm. so much amazing things in Minnesota that, uh, that, that I'd like to go back and revisit. And, and Hank, what kind of music do you, does your band play? Are you country? Are you hard rock? What do you play? It's like, I guess it's like rockabilly. Elvis. Oh. Have you seen the Elvis movie yet, guys? 
I have not. I've heard it's awesome, though. No, not yet. It's the greatest movie ever made in the world. Just kidding. It's good. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love, I love old Elvis. I love old surf music. You know, anything from the 50s and 60s is my favorite, and even the 40s, the gypsy jazz. So we do a lot of retro kind of kind of music, and it's all original. And uh, it, it has maybe a little bit modern twist just because instruments nowadays are, are modern. We have electrified guitars now. Yeah, we're gonna have to mm -hmm. get him. We're gonna have to get him up here during the winter for ice fishing. Maybe his band can come with Ooh. too. Ooh, <laughs> that's Boy, a, he's, think, he's thinking too. about it. <laughs> he's like, I'm not sitting on ice. <laughs> uh, Hank, I got you, one last question you, before we. Uh, oh, go go ahead. If you dared me, I'd, I'd probably do it. I'll, I'll, I'm I'll, on Twitter I'll get a right hold now, of you. daring you. I'll get a hold of you over the next few days. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hank, have you done any chasing up here in North Dakota or Minnesota in recent years? I know we've had a couple, uh, you know, it's been a little on the quieter side for larger and bigger structures and, and big tornadoes up here. But I think it was just a few years ago. Oh, 2020, I want to say it was the Ashby tornado, the, the, the famous drill bit. Were you on that or have you been up here in any recent years? So, as you guys know, July is, that's when the Ashby tornado happened. It's, uh, it's a very sporadic month, and I'm a long way from home by then. I've been a long way from home. So, I, I held out for the Ashby tornado. I knew every year you guys get that crazy, beautiful tornado, either in Iowa, North Dakota, or Minnesota in July, and I was holding out for it. The two days before that tornado, I called it a season and drove home. And got home just to see Melanie Metz, Ashby Tornado, which might be one of the prettiest <laughs> things I've ever seen on video before. Yeah. Unfortunately, we know that there was at least one death, maybe two deaths. But mm -hmm. as far as a, a, as a photogenic spectacle, I don't think you can get more photogenic than that. I completely agree with you. Well, Pecos from you see all it? of us here at Weather... I, I've my buddy was out on it chasing it, and I passed up the opportunity because I had to work in a kitchen, so <laughs> I, I missed it by just like three right. hours. Yeah. Maybe in the next but ten years we'll, we'll catch something. Yeah. Hey, we'll maybe see another one like that in ten years. Well, Peco, seriously, from all of us here, we are just ecstatic that you were able to come on here. So thank you very much in spending the last about forty minutes talking all about storms. For those listening, where can they find you on social media, YouTube? Because I know that you have, and I'll just go out there and say it's some of the best footage on earth of storms. I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, I have a YouTube channel, Pecos Hank, and then a website, Pecos Hank. Pop in, watch some videos, and uh, and and leave a comment. And and get those awesome. pictures well, before the prices go up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, I'm thanks, gonna keep. Pecos. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep them down a little bit longer. Awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. I appreciate Perfect. it. Thank you, Pecos. Yep, you have a great rest of your day. It. Oh, we'll have to. Maybe try and get you on here in December again so we can talk about this mystery that you were left us hanging yeah, on. Yeah, this mystery in December. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish I could talk about it right now so bad. I uh, can't. Where do you see, where do you see it? Cliffhanger. Oh, well, absolutely can't wait.